exclusive Caribbean vacation resorts, phone 888-784-7064. Good morning weather forecast, mostly sunny today, few scattered clouds near 80, southeast wind 5 to 10. Partly to mostly clear overnight, mid to upper 50s for the low. Partly to mostly cloudy Saturday with a chance of showers and thunderstorms late in the day, the high near 80. Showers and thunderstorms Saturday night and Sunday. Mostly cloudy Sunday in the low 70s. Your life, your music. We're KLEK 102.5 FM. From Feature Story News in London, I'm Natalie Powell. U.S. President Donald Trump has faced criticism over his leadership from former presidents Barack Obama and George W. Bush. Speaking separately, his predecessors said the American public needed a better role model. According to a new report, figures from 2015 suggest 9 million deaths globally were caused by pollution. And the European Union says it will not get involved in the dispute between Spain and the autonomous region of Catalan, which voted for independence earlier this month. It's 9.01. Community Conversations is brought to you by Arkansas Early Learning, offering no-cost child care in Jonesboro in Northeast Arkansas. Applications at arearlylearning.org. Arkansas Early Learning is a nonprofit organization. K-L-E-K L-P Jonesboro, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council. It's now time for Community Conversations a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council, or our underwriters or sponsors. Good morning to you out there. Happy Friday. I hope everyone is having a great start to your day. You're tuned in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. I'm your host, Quibila Hardin, and I have some very special guests in the studio with me today. I have Dr. Patricia Guy Walls from Arkansas State University. She's a professor in the social work department. We have Dr. Evie Taylor, also from the social work department. And we have Mr. Blaze Taylor. Um, he's a student at Arkansas State University. University, and he's going to be talking about an upcoming event uh, called the Fall Festival, and he's going to actually give you more introduction about himself. So we're going to go around the table, and if you could just please give a brief introduction of who you are and what you do. <laughs> Dr. Uh, Walls. Good morning. I'm Dr. Patricia Guy Walls. I serve in the capacity as the BSW Program Director and the Co-Chair of the Social Work Department. Okay. Good morning, I'm Evie Taylor, and I'm a professor in the social work department. Good morning, I'm Blaze Taylor. Um, I'm an A-State football player. I'm a senior, um, and I'm uh, getting excited to get the fall festival going and running my nonprofit organization. And I am very excited to hear more about it. This is my first time hearing about it, and so I'm happy to have you here to discuss that, so thank you. Um, but we're also going to be talking about an upcoming event called the Delta Health Disparities Conference. Uh, Dr. Walls, you were here maybe last year yeah. to talk about one that you did. And at that time, the focus was on health care in the Delta region or the lack thereof or lack of access to. And this uh, year, I see that some of the topics are a little bit different but are very important to discuss. So if you could please um, give us some more introduction about this conference and what people can expect. <laughs> Okay, this year's conference, and uh, we, we did uh, start this conference about five years ago. Okay. This is our fifth annual conference. And the background behind the conference was to look at the health disparities that are common in the Delta area, given that Arkansas State University sits within that area. So this year's conference, again, we're looking at uh, increase in the awareness and gaps between health uh, health care in the Delta as well as how services are delivered. Okay. Now I see that some of the workshop topics and uh, before we get to that, the date of this conference is November 17th, uh, 2017 from 8 to 4 p.m. and it will be held in the Student Union uh, which is on the campus of Arkansas State University. Do you by chance know what room we got the entire uh, building book, so oh, wow. it would be uh, throughout the rooms. The okay. keynote speaker, if I can talk a little bit yes, about please. the keynote speaker. 
This year's speaker is Dr. Robert Fully Love. Okay. And he comes to us from the uh, Community University Medical Center in New York. Okay. Uh, Dr. Fully Love, research is something that I am particularly passionate about because most of his research focus on HIV and A, okay. in particular with African Americans. So we're very fortunate to be able to have someone of his statute to come and share with us. So he would be the keynote speaker and the keynote uh, address will begin at 9.30 a.m. Okay. in Centennial Hall. Okay, um, during his research, has he stated that there has been an influx in statistics um, um, among the African American population concerning HIV and AIDS? Yes, he has. Okay. And uh, hopefully we will have a topic or a presenter. On, that's the one track that is not filled okay. at this uh, moment is our track on HIV and AIDS. So I'm hoping that I get someone who will present on it so I won't have to. Okay. Um, I have done research in this area and right now what I'm looking at in reference to HIV and AIDS is I'm looking at the increase of African American women, 50 and above. Those numbers are significantly higher right now. Do you think it's um, it could be due to them either engaging with younger partners or just they feel that because of their age they don't have to ask those questions or get regular checkups? I think it's a combination of both. Uh, what the research is saying with African American women that are 50 and above, they're very trusting mm -hmm. of, of their mate and so they're not presenting those questions and then too when you look at the data and the ratio in reference to men and women okay. again that is coming up in the literature as one of the reason why they are not presenting the question you don't want to run them off okay uh, and it is also indicating that when women goes for their yearly uh, physical Okay. It is not something that is always presented to them by their gynecologist because they feel like they're not sexually active oh. for whatever reason. Okay, so we as women um, or individuals in general need to be more proactive when it comes to their health and not leave it up to the doctor to ask those questions. We need to start presenting um, either information or asking questions or requesting testing be done every single time we go to the doctor. Yeah, or, or if you get in a sexual relationship. Okay, and I see another topic on the list is sexual health, which um, what can people expect under that topic? Um, in my opinion, I feel that um, people are becoming a little too fast and loose <laughs> with their sexual health. Um, I know that's a crazy t Anyway. Um, no, that's very accurate. <laughs> <laughs> And so I would love to see people, more people be more responsible and stop making just, you know, irresponsible choices. <laughs> well, I, I, I said that that's very accurate in the sense that Dr. Taylor and I presented on that, on the topic last okay. spring. And that is exactly what we kind of found out <laughs> when we presented this information to college students. So I think you're right on the money. Okay, well, I hope all of these topics, um, every single um, lecture, or are they considered lectures? They're going to be presentations. presentations. Each presentation is going to be about an hour and 15 minutes, and uh, we have uh, just a wide array. I mean, we're going to be talking about health disparities. There will be a student form poster okay. presentation where students will be talking uh, talking about obesity, some of the topics they're looking at is drug abuse in the Delta. Uh, I know that one of the health topics that we're going to be looking at is going to be looking at heart diseases among African American okay. and a host of other topics. All right, so out of these discussions, what are your hopes and goals or your goals and object your goals? Um, what do you hope comes out of these discussions? Maybe programs developed to cater to the needs that are with, cater to the needs. I'm sorry. Increasing the awareness uh, 
is one of the primary goals. We can't do better until we know how to do better. And so that was the vision behind implementing the Health Disparity Conference is raising the community awareness of the number of preventable diseases okay. that are present in our community and what can we do not only as a university but as a community to begin to address okay. some of these preventable diseases that that we are having and and that we are dealing with this year's conference that uh, we always have vendors and we always have uh, providers. We do free HIV and A testing. Okay. And I really want to encourage people this year uh, to go in and be tested. What I hear all the time is people say, well, I don't need to be tested. Well, my question is, are you sexually active? Okay. And if you are and you are not uh, being protective, then you need to be tested. The numbers keep rising. And that says to me that we have a lot of people that are continuing to have sex and, and they're not being protected. So we're offering free testing. It's private. And so we are really going to be encouraging people to take advantage of that uh, this year. We're doing something a little bit new this year in reference to we also have providers and we're partnering with the local health department okay. and they will be providing free flu shots oh. so if you haven't got your shot we will okay. also be doing that we will be doing depression screening oh, wow. uh, body mass blood pressure so we're going to be doing a lot of health checks that are free okay. throughout the conference uh, for providers, uh, mental health. If you attend the conference, you have the opportunity to earn 5.5 uh, CEUs or contact hours that will go towards uh, getting your license renewed. Okay. Uh, registration for the conference is $70. Okay. Uh, that do not include if you want to have a sit down uh, meal that is something new that we're doing with the conference this year. Uh, if you want to have the meal, then you need to indicate that when you are registering, okay. and the meal would be $15. So I think that you're getting a very nice uh, package yes, for, for a small amount of money. One final thing that we're doing different with this year's conference is we're having a panel and with all of the disasters that we have been looking at uh, within the state and outside of the state, we're gonna have a panel that addresses what do you do uh, in the time of disasters. So that's gonna be new to the conference this year and I'm very excited about that. Uh, one of the uh, Facilitators for that particular event will be Dr. Debbie Purcell, who is known nationally for her work with uh, disaster preparedness. Is she at Arkansas State University? Yes, she is. Okay. I think I've heard of her name, but I haven't had a chance to speak with her before. So that is something that we do need to discuss. We don't need to wait until the time of something happens. We need to be proactive and start putting plans into place. I remember having those conversations with some of the emergency response um, individuals for the city of Donesboro, like the police, fire, um, ambulance, and 911. We need to start making plans. You, uh, start when your children are young right. and um, make a plan and go over it, oh, go over it again and again and again until it's you know, become second nature, so. All right, so what are some other things? Where can people go and register for this? Uh -huh. uh, they can go to our website, all right? Uh, it is on our website. They can uh, go to the website and just register. Uh, if you have problems with the uh, website, they can call the social work office okay. and uh, speak to Miss Barbara Brook and she would be more than happy to assist them with the registration process. Okay, now you said on, it would it be on the A-State's website? Mm -hmm. It's on A-State website and it's on the social work uh, page website. Okay, so if you go to astate.edu, 
tap on the little magnifying glass to search box and go to social work and then search their scroll through the page to find the fifth annual health, delta health disparities conference and look for the registration form yeah there's a link that will take you right to what you need to do okay all right well thank you so much for mm -hmm. that information dr wall so uh, we're going to switch gears a little bit and talk about an upcoming fall festival well first i want to give a few shout outs to our facebook watchers um Ms. Lachey Robinson says, good morning to everybody. Uh, Chrissy Mathis Conway says, I love Dr. Walls, my most right. favorite professor ever. <laughs> so you must have been good to somebody. <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you to everyone else that is watching. I can't see who you are. So if you have any questions or comments, please drop your message in our Facebook live stream or you can call the studio at 870-277-1080. So we're going to bring in Dr. Abby Taylor and Mr. Blaze, and they're going to be talking about the Fall Festival and the nonprofit um, Blaze's nonprofit organization. So, first, tell us about the nonprofit organization. Okay, uh, the nonprofit organization is called the Power of One or Two, okay. and the reason why we named it the Power of One or Two is because. Uh, we decided that you know it only takes one or two people to make an impact and difference in someone's life and so we want to help be that one or two people that makes a difference in someone's life or put people in a place where they can help somebody and make a difference in someone's life a lot of times people think oh you know I'm nobody I'm just a regular person I really can't make a difference or I really can't do anything or help anyone but everyone has a gift and if you use that gift uh, to serve others you can find a way to help somebody. Okay, you gotta go ahead on, y'all. <laughs> 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 Alright, so how many people so far are involved in this organization? Um, I'd say we probably have close to probably around 30 people or so right now. Oh, um, cool. We've got a lot of people that have signed up to be mentors to uh, kids in the community that are kind of at-risk youth. And so um, a, lot, a lot of the people right now have volunteered to take on a mentorship role with a kid in the community. And so that's one of the things that uh, we've been doing a lot of so far. All right, so uh, do the mentors have to go through any type of training or certification just to see, make sure they're a good fit to even work with kids? <laughs> Uh, yes, most of the people uh, that have volunteered are college students right now. Okay. We have some people from the social work department and then people from athletics that want to get involved and uh, spend their time with kids and things like that. And so uh, when, you sign, when you sign up and reach out and say that you want to, you know, get involved with the organization, we have a couple meetings and sit down and kind of talk to each person and let them know what to expect and um, kind of what they're going to be asked to do and make sure if they have any questions that we answer it and then kind of sit down and talk to them and get a feel for them and then we know what kids are looking for mentors and then we try to pair people up based off of interest and compatibility. All right, so, so far, where have you gone to connect with uh, the children in the community? What um, other organizations have you maybe partnered with or contacted? Uh, we partner a lot with A-State Care. Okay. We've also um, do a lot of work with Success Achievement Academy, which is the local alternative school here in town, and then a couple other um, elementary schools here in Jonesboro uh, we work with as well. All right. And so I am very happy to hear that you as a young man, football player, um, is doing something outside of just school. So many students get caught up in, I'm just going to go to class, I'm going to graduate, and like that's it. Um, Many don't get involved in extracurricular activities or community-based organizations. So I'm very happy that you have taken the step and doing something outside of yourself. Um, you know, whether you realize it or not, and you may have heard this before, that you know, being a football player, being someone in, in a particular spotlight, you are a how can I say <laughs> um, a role model, whether you really want to be or not. Um, a lot of young children do look up to you like, oh, they play football for college. And so I'm happy that um, you all have taken on that role as being a role model, a positive role model for the young people, young people in our community. Um, so how often do you and your mentors meet to discuss, you know, action plans? Uh, we try to meet. Uh, at least once a month but everybody that has a, a mentee 
they meet with that mentee at least once a week. Uh, a lot of us try to do at least twice a week, if possible, fit into the schedule. But everybody meets with their uh, mentee at least once a week. And then uh, depending on the age of that kid, if they have a phone, then they stay in contact outside of school and things like that. And sometimes they'll do things on the weekends together uh, just to try to encourage them to spend their time because a lot of them need um, some things to do in their free time and don't make the best decisions during their free time. So just try to give them an alternative during their free time, you know, to, hey, if you find yourself maybe in a bad situation, you know, you can always call your, your mentor and they'll come get you and you can spend some time doing something constructive. That is awesome. So do you often um, take this, your mentees maybe on campus and show them around and just expose them to what college life is like? Uh, I have uh, my my mentor, uh, I mean my mentee, Datavion. Um, he's in the fourth grade right now, so um, I brought him on campus. He's came to practice before. He came to our spring game. Uh, he came to the Arkansas State Pine Bluff game, and then um, last year when they had the fair on campus, uh, came and brought him and took him to the fair and oh, things wow. like that. So he's been on campus a few times. He came over to my apartment once and played some video games with a couple of his friends. So. Uh, Really, it's just kind of based on the mentee-mentor relationship, whether you want to go out to eat with them or if you want to bring them to your place and hang out. Kind of depends on each kid, what they're into and things like that. So you just turned them into a little mini room. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so let's talk about this fall fest. Oh, we're going to get ready for a quick break. So we don't want to run out of time and you have to stop get cut off so we're going to take a quick break um again you're tuned in to community conversations on klak 102.5 fm we're speaking with dr patricia guy walls from arkansas state university from the social work department dr evie taylor also from the social work department and mr blaze taylor from arkansas state university he's a student a senior football player so congratulations on your recent win for homecoming <laughs> all right so we're going to take a quick break please do not go anywhere we'll be right back after these announcements <laughs> You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. What is your child passionate about? I'm Mark Merrill with today's Family Minute. Maybe your son is passionate about art. Maybe your daughter is passionate about animals. No matter what it might be, every child is uniquely wired to be passionate about something. And as parents, it's up to us to help spark our child's curiosity. To do so, there are certain things you should do with your children every year. First, take them to a science museum where they can experiment and learn. Second, take them on an outdoor adventure where they can explore nature. Finally, take them to a school or university where they can be inspired by the power of education. Be sure to always look for new ways to encourage your kids' passions. And remember, your family first. Want to connect with Mark on Facebook? You can at facebook.com slash Mark Merrill. Family Minute is made possible by the Kappa Nu Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization committed to service to all mankind. Kappa Nu Omega Alpha Kappa Alpha on Facebook and K-N-O-M-E-G-A 1908.com. The Epic Center, located at 1899 Hasbrook Road, County Road 333, is Jonesboro's newest venue for entertainment for the entire family. They offer an auditorium with theater-style seating for up to 1,100 guests, a large stage, professional lighting and sound, dressing rooms, concessions, and more. Available for weddings, concerts, pageants, birthday parties, showers, and more. Booking and other information is available at Epic Center Jonesboro on Facebook, EpicCenterJonesboro.com and at 870-530-5841. 
Support for KLEK is brought to you by Fullness of Joy Ministries, 2120 Thorn Street, Jonesboro, under the direction of Bishop Adrian Rogers and co-pastor Susan Rogers, www.fojministries.org. From the KLEK community calendar, the therapeutic foster care program at Mid-South Health Systems is in need of individuals who have room in their hearts and a home to become foster parents. More information is available at Eight seven zero nine seven two four zero five two or eight seven zero nine seven two four nine one seven. And now back to community conversations on KLEK one oh two point five FM. All right, welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We're speaking with Dr. Patricia Guy Walls. Dr. Evie Taylor, both from the Social Work Department at Arkansas State University, and Mr. Blaze Taylor, uh, Arkansas State University student, who is uh, a part of a, I say a new, fairly new, um, nonprofit organization. Now, is this organization campus based? Uh, no, it's not. It's a 501c3 okay. a nonprofit organization, and so um, we're incorporated, and um, that happened probably in. Uh, August, early August. All right, so have you gotten, um, I would say, I'm sure you've gotten some support from individuals, professors, and other staff members at Arkansas State University. Um, have you made any partnerships or have people agreed to partner with you to help your efforts to reach the young people? Um, right now, we don't have any partners, I'd say. Uh, we get a lot of support from A State Care and do a lot of things with them because they're very involved with the community okay. and things like that. Um, but there's lots of professors that I've taken that um, in previous classes and things that I've definitely supported and helped with posting on Facebook, advertisements, things mm -hmm. like that, just kind of getting the word out to try to get more people involved. So as of now, do you have a website or Facebook page? Okay. We also um, have a website, uh, www.thepowerof1or2.org. And then we also have a Facebook page and Twitter page uh, that you can find us at um, through our website, or you can find find us on the Facebook page uh, just under the power of one or two. Okay, now is one or two spelled out or just It's one, just the number, the numbers. one or okay. two. Okay, so I'll make sure to post that information on our uh, social media pages. We try to keep up with <laughs> what's going right. on and to keep everybody informed. So um, as of now, how long have you all been in operation? Uh, probably, I'd say since late August, oh, so it's uh, okay. fa fairly new, Very just a new. couple months, yes. Um, it was a project that me and my sister started this summer, and so it took What's a name? Star Taylor. Hi, Star. <laughs> <laughs> and so she she's on the basketball team here at ASU, oh. and so uh, trying to coordinate our schedules throughout the summer kind of took a little longer than expected, um, but we were able to get it kind of up and running probably uh, started late August so uh, that's kind of when we officially got going. Okay now you know some people talk about sibling robbery how has it been working with your sister? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it's been good um, She she's real good with uh, technology and things like that so okay. she's good with uh, doing the website, doing social media, things like that. I'm not a big techno technology guy. I don't know how to work Facebook and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> I'm more of a Twitter person. Mm -hmm. So okay. um, there's a few characters. One, yeah. One and done. <laughs> so she she she's done really well with that, and so and then she's also very involved um, with all our community events and things like that oh. as well. So wonderful. Well, I'm gonna definitely be on the lookout for you guys, and I would love to have you back again. And, um, maybe some of your other mentors and other people that are involved with your program to really talk about you know, some things that you have going on. So um, one thing we mentioned before that there's a fall festival coming up. So mm -hmm. Dr. Taylor, would you like to jump in and tell us all about that? Yes, we're very excited about our fall festival. This year actually it'll be on Saturday from 11 to 2 and it's going to be at Magnolia Baptist Church which okay. is on the corner of Magnolia and Patrick Street. Um, basically, the Fall Festival is just something that we do. It's a family fun day. 
um, for our community members, particularly in North Jonesboro. Okay. We'll be having free food. Right. I know that gets a lot Everybody of people. free. free food. <laughs> yes. We'll emphasize everything is free. Okay. Um, we have games, face painting, a cake walk, which was a big hit last week. Oh, wow. It's a game, you win cake if you win. I remember that. <laughs> we have, um, we're going to have music. Actually, one of the football players is going to be a DJ. What? And we have inflatables, an obstacle course, a bouncy house, and lots of games. So we're real excited about it this week. That is awesome. So give us the date again one more time. Okay, it's going to be this Saturday, October 21st. Oh, wow. Okay. So, so there's a lot going on tomorrow. this weekend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. And again, this is at Magnolia Road Baptist Church. And what time does it kick off again? 11 o'clock. 11 a.m. All right. So bring the whole family out. Bring everyone out. This is a time to fellowship and get to know your neighbors. Um, I'm always talking about... Uh, we need to get to know our neighbors and not just your next door neighbor but your cross street cross town next neighborhood type neighbor so i really hope that is a great turnout um the weather seems to be favorable yes. <laughs> and so there's going to be all types of food games um all kinds of things to enjoy music uh, what types of games can people look forward to seeing or playing well we'll, we'll be having some um, a sack race we will be having a soda pop ring toss. Okay. We'll have some um, an art table for different arts and crafts that the younger ones can make. We have a face painting table, so if you want your face painted. Okay. Um, we actually have one of our cheerleaders is going to be doing that and some social work students. We have the obstacle course, and so oh. that's going to be a competition because <laughs> they're going to be time for that. And then we have the bouncy house for the younger ones. We have the, what is it, the bongo? Oh, Bago, where, where you okay. toss the bean bags. <laughs> and one of the, the fun booths is going to be the dunking booth. Oh, wow. So, um, for those of you that want to come dunk Blaze Taylor, you will be in the dunk booth. And I've been kind of nervous to post grades this week because um, if my students don't like their grades, they may want to come dunk me. So, that's why the grades aren't on Blackboard yet. <laughs> oh, good. So, they may be frustrated because their grade is not posted or... <laughs> Frustrated because I may not have a great grace. <laughs> Either way, come out, dunk one of the. Yes, we all have in the, in the uh, tank. <laughs> some um, some faculty at Success Academy. Okay. The police officer there and some of their security have volunteered to be in the dunk oh, So I think that we're going to have a lot of students from Success that will be there because they're very excited to be able to dunk their authority figures. <laughs> oh my goodness. So it's going to be a fun field day. Yes, it is. And we really like to encourage family events for the parents to get involved with their children. And sometimes they don't know family friendly events. So that's something in the community we really want to encourage more, more events that are family atmosphere and focus on doing things with your children. So we're, we're very excited. That is awesome. And so Mr. Blaze, will a lot of the football team or some of the football team be out there? Uh, yes, we'll have some um, A-State football players that will come out and be out there. Uh, one of them is actually going to be uh, controlling the music and DJing for the event, and then we'll have other guys that will be out there. Um, some of them are going to be bringing their mentees, and then also some of them are just going to be out there, you know, running the obstacle course, okay. racing people in the obstacle course, uh, su supervising the bouncy house and things like that, just volunteering and being a part of it. And I think we'll also have some uh, some of the cheerleaders are coming out. Okay. I know a couple of them are coming in. Um, We'll also have some of the A-State women's basketball team okay. will be there as well. That'll be awesome for the kids to get to see um, Arkansas State University students interacting with them. And maybe they might have questions, you know. Uh, we would love to see more students graduate and go to Arkansas State University instead of going off. But unfortunately, they do. But hopefully, you know, you all can inspire them that... Arkansas State is the place to be. <laughs> yeah, we'll have some uh, students as well that are just regular traditional yeah. students that will be there as well um, at the Fall Festival this weekend. We have a lot of social work students. A lot of, a lot of social, social work students. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, and this will also give the social work students maybe some hands-on um, insight into the different individuals they may encounter during their course, their career. So this would be a great opportunity for them as well, depending on what course, whatever path they want to take. Right. We have several social work students that are interning at A-State Care. So basically, this is just one event that we do. Okay. But we have a tutoring program right there at Miller Baptist Church with um, the daycare there. Okay. 
And we also are really involved with Success Academy. So we have students that are in there volunteering, helping the teachers in the classrooms oh. with the students and behavior management and things like that. That's awesome. We're at Morningside Retirement Center. Oh. And so we have some students that are placed there through A-State Care. Basically with A-State Care, we just try to meet the needs in the community, whatever they are. We have a clothing closet there. We have a food pantry. So when the community members come in, we just ask them what their needs are. And you know, they needed some activities for their children, like the tutoring program, we started okay. with the tutoring program. Some of them didn't have clothes, so we opened a clothing closet. Oh, wow. You know, recently we've heard that, you know, some are interested in a GED program and things like that. So we just kind of try to get started. You know, whatever their needs are, we try to assist in meeting those needs. That is really wonderful. So we really thank you um, for all of the things that you try to do. Um, I've been trying to find, more information about Ace Take Care, is there a link on the Arkansas State's website or do you have your own separate web page or? The students are working, they just started a Facebook page. Okay. And so the students are currently working on that. And you can always get information by just contacting the social work department. Okay. And our events will be up. Okay. So again, go to arkansasstate.edu, uh, search for social work, and on the left hand side, there's all different kind of tabs that take you to different, um, or different links I should say, that take you to different information um, concerning that department. So you will be able to find something about A-State Care. Now are you all looking for any volunteers for the Fall Festival or A-State Care? I think well, right now we would just love for anybody to bring their kids out. Okay. Um, I think that we have we have a lot of volunteers, like I said, a lot of social work students partnering with the power of one or two. Um, they have a lot of their mentee or mentors okay. that are coming to volunteer. We also have some ladies from Chi Omega and some men from Kappa Alpha Psi, some of the you know fraternity and sorority on campus that okay. are volunteering to work also. So we have a lot of volunteers and we're just really excited anytime we see the young students getting involved and wanting to make a difference in the community. All right, so will any of your students um, be passing out information concerning the Delta Health Disparities Conference or will you, will you mention it during the Fall Festival? We will mention it during the Fall Fest. We, will, uh, we have been uh, passing out information. It's in the ASU Digest. Okay. Uh, it would later be in the uh, Jonesboro Sun. Okay. And so uh, my message to everyone that may be listening is to really talk up the conference. Again, every year it gets larger, okay. it gets better. And the keynote speaker this year is just absolutely awesome. Okay. I can't wait to hear his address because I feel that um, I'm hoping that he's going to talk about HIV and AIDS. I, I don't know exactly what his topic will be uh, yet. He has not sent that in, but I know that most of his research is in that area. Okay. And that was the thing that was most attractive to me simply because of of all of the HIV cases that are nationally, you know, over half of those cases are in the Delta area. So we cannot talk too much about this topic. And to have someone of Dr. Fully Love's statue to be here on our campus is pretty significant. Um, I did want to briefly um, just talk, highlight a little bit of the other people that is going to be on the conference. Our new chancellor, uh, Dr. Kelly uh, Damphouse, will be bearing greetings. Uh, during the conference and Dr. Maurice Gibson, okay. who I love, is yes. co-sponsoring, uh, is help co-sponsoring <laughs> this camp, uh, this particular health disparity. And Maurice has been a co-sponsor for several of our uh, health disparity conferences. He is the Vice Provost of the Office of Diversity and he will be introducing our keynote speaker uh, this year. Some of the other topics that, uh, that we will be addressing during the conference is one that I don't think that we have or I have attended a presentation on this campus is we have one of our professors, Dr. Rejoice Adai, and one of our students, uh, Ms. Sarah, is going to be presenting on the robe of animal therapy. 
in Sochiwar. Okay. So that should be very, very interesting and uh, well. Dr. Jody Long and I will be talking about uh, heart diseases in the Delta okay. and uh, some things that we need to be mindful of and how we can begin to be really proactive about this particular diagnosis. Again, this is a disease that is running rapid Mm -hmm. within the African-American uh, community as well. Yes. Uh, go I'm ahead. sorry, a lot of this is just really preventable mm -hmm. um, before it gets to the point where they need extensive medical care. <laughs> yeah. And so it's going to be a really great conference. It's a very inexpensive conference when compared to what you normally have to go and spend when you attend the conference. So again, I want to mention the price for the conference uh, for all professionals that may be in the field that need CEU. This is a very inexpensive way for you to uh, obtain at least 5.5 contact hours. Registration fee is $70 for professionals. For any faculty member, social worker, or any other faculty member that attend the conference, it is $40 for that registration. A state students is $15. And for field supervisors who have our students in your agency, we are discounting your registration and that registration fee will be $40. Okay. All right, and all this information again is located on the Arkansas State's website. Yes. Um, okay. And so make sure to go to Arkansas State, astate.edu, uh, search for social work and then look for the link for the fifth annual Delta Health Disparities Conference. Um, Mr. Blaze, will you or any of the younger people, <laughs> students on campus, uh, be involved in this conference or at least attend some of the discussions? Um, I'm not sure if anybody's going to be involved uh, from the power of one or two. Um, I know that anytime we have conferences go on, there's lots of students that always go either through their classes it's recommended uh, or they read about it in the school newspaper and things like that so I wouldn't be surprised if any of our uh, members of our organization were in some way involved a lot of people in our organization like to be involved in things on campus and uh, in the community and things like that so I definitely wouldn't be surprised to see somebody from my organization um, at the event or helping out in some way or form and I don't know if you mentioned earlier what is your major um, I got my undergrad in business administration, okay. and then I got my master's uh, in business administration as well. So I also got my MBA. Okay, so what are you working on now? <laughs> <laughs> this, is, uh, say, this is his senior year, so this is only his fourth year here, and he already has his MBA. Uh, yes. Uh, um, <laughs> right now, I'm currently doing an internship, and then I'm also taking a couple of classes that I think will be beneficial for me going forward. I'm in a professional selling class. I'm also in a micro Microsoft Office uh, class that basically just makes you Microsoft Office proficient in Word, Excel, Access, and PowerPoint. So um, that's kind of what I'm doing right now. Okay, how old are you? Uh, 21. Mm -hmm. what, have I doing? what have I been doing with my life? <laughs> wow, you are amazing. And I know, um, Maybe you must already know that Dr. Evie is your mom, so I'm sure she's pushed you and pushed as a strong, encouraged, <laughs> motivated, <laughs> nudged <laughs> you along the way. So we want, I know we're getting away from the original topic, but I do want to give you some time to talk about yourself. What has been your motivation to keep you going, to keep your grades up, to be at the point you are, to have the various degrees? at such a young age and being a young male in this today's society what has been your drive and motivation uh, i just have to say that it's probably both of my parents uh growing up uh they really emphasized education and knowing that the more educated you are the better decisions you'll make and so uh the better decisions you make normally tend to lead to the better a better lifestyle if you choose to make better choices and decisions then normally th those things will turn out good for you in the end so uh, just trying to get the most education that you can um, one of my favorite quotes is from Einstein saying like the education or learning should start at birth and should not cease until you die and so um, just always trying to 
learn something new every day and just continue to grow as a person each and every day. I think that's one thing that my parents really instilled in me and my sister at a young age is always just continue to learn, uh, know that education is the one thing in life that can't be taken away from you. Everything else can be taken away at any point in time, whether uh, it's an accident or someone purposely tries to injure you or something like that. Like your physical ability and all those things will fade, but what you learn uh, is yours to keep. Nobody can take it from you. That is amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. With that, we're going to have to go into another break. So when we come back, we'll wrap up all the information that was shared today, give you the dates and times of the different events that are going on. And Mr. Blaze, it just made me feel like, okay, <laughs> I need to step up my game. <laughs> um, we lo I love having young people in the studio. They give me energy and inspiration. Um, I'm taking lots of notes. <laughs> so you're tuned in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. Don't go away. We'll be right back after these announcements. Listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. We're back with Money Matters. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. Our Think Wealthy quote of the week comes from John Rogers, founder of Ariel Investments one of the nation's largest black-owned asset management firms. My father had started buying stocks for me you know, every birthday and every Christmas after I was 12. So I learned to get comfortable with the markets and uh, have total confidence in my ability to pick stocks and sell stocks and do the right things. Rogers is a great example of what happens when we invest in the financial education of our children at an early age. In order to build wealth that sustains itself from generation to generation, we must make financial literacy in our homes, our churches, and other community institutions a priority. But it all starts with you. What are you teaching your kids about money? Think long term, stay the course, and not let all the short term noise pull them out of the market exactly the wrong time or pull them back in at exactly the wrong time. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. for Money Matters, a product of American Urban Radio Networks. Money Matters is made possible by the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization dedicated to uncompromising commitment to communities, service, leadership, empowerment. www.jonesboroalumni.dst.org. Money Matters is brought to you by Bancorp South, offering checking, savings, loans, credit cards, and wealth management. Five locations in Jonesboro to serve you. www.bancorpsouth.com or 870-972-9800. Danny Ford, owner of Glen St. Motors in Paragould, strongly believes in the values of family and hard work with a commitment to the men and women of the U.S. Armed Forces who keep America free. Providing sales and servicing of Chevys, GMCs, Buicks, and Cadillacs. Located at 6345 Highway 49 in Paragould. 870-565-4358. Details at glensaintparagould.com and at klekfm.org. God bless our troops. KLEK thanks C.J. Pepper and the staff of Life Strategies Counseling Incorporated for helping people through hard times in life such as depression, family issues, stress, abuse, and more. They offer counseling and therapy for all ages, individuals, families, and groups. They are located at 1217 Stone Street. Phone number 1-866-972-1268 or online at lscihelp.com. Arkansas Early Learning offers child care activities and educational programs to children ages 0 to 5. That gives them a head start in life. Arkansas Early Learning is in the community at no cost. Applications at arearlylearning.org. That's arearlylearning.org. Or on Facebook at Arkansas Early Learning. 
Arkansas Early Learning is a nonprofit organization. KLEK 102.5 FM wants to be active in the community. If you or your organization is hosting a community service event, we would like to know about it and be a part of it. KLEK will promote your event on air, online, and on social media. KLEK personalities may also attend the event and provide music and or entertainment. Certain restrictions and availability may apply. If you or your organization would like to partner with KLEK to make the Jonesboro community a better place, call a 70-277-1080 or email us at klek at klekfm.org. In order for a community announcement or church announcement to be aired on KLEK 102.5 FM, we ask that the announcement be sent at minimum one week in advance. Thank you for supporting KLEK 102.5 FM. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. All right, welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We have been having a very lively discussion today. I know we've kind of gone on various top, gone on over various topics, but they are all very important um, things that are beneficial to the community. Even though these individuals represent Arkansas State University, these events are for the community. Um, all the topics that will be discussed, all the activities that will be that will take place on this Saturday, starting at 11, at Magnolia Road Baptist Church uh, Fall Festival. This is an event for the community. Even though it's hosted by individuals from Arkansas State University, this is an opportunity to bring the kids from the whole family. Come out, get to know your neighbors, fellowship, get to know people that are from Arkansas State. Um, like uh, Dr. Evie said, there'll be dunking booths and all types of games and food and music and just so much to so much to do. <laughs> so can you please uh, give us some more highlights or, you know, how tell us how much work went into putting this together or how how did it come together? <laughs> well, like I said earlier, we want to encourage um, the family to do activities together. And a lot of times there's not a lot of things where people, well, there's things going on in the community. People just are not aware of them. So I have several social work students that are interning for A-State Care, and they have been probably like preparing like the last month, okay. trying to get people to volunteer, to work at each booth, trying to get food, trying to um, get somebody to barbecue, you know, <laughs> getting someone to do the DJ, getting the music, you know, there's a lot of planning that goes into it. Okay. Um, but they all, they're great students, you know, our social work students are very active in the community, and like Blaze was saying with the power of one or two, you know, that's what our students want to do. They want to make a difference in someone's life and we want to make a difference in the community. So this is just a way to build that relationship with A-State Care and the community. So the kids can come and the families can come. They can get to know some of the social work students and talk to them about life at A-State. Okay. They can get to know some of the um, football players and the basketball players and the cheerleaders, you know, the different athletes on campus. A lot of times that's exciting. All right. And we're all just trying to encourage, um, you know, positive, empower each other, support each other, encourage each other. Alrighty, and I, I try to say this as often as I can, Arkansas State is not a separate entity. It is a part of this community. It's a part of the city of Jonesboro. So we want everyone to come out and fellowship and get to know these individuals because the services that you all provide on campus truly benefit the city of Jonesboro and surrounding areas. Um, and that's why I try to host shows like this, bring people on from the campus so that the residents can know what is going on and what's available to them. Um, you don't have to be a student. You don't have to even be an aspiring student. Um, just be someone who has some concern in some area and wants to go out and meet other people that have the same concern and talk about ways to put those uh, plans into action. <laughs> so, okay, and so then we have the health disparity, the Delta uh, health disparities conference coming up so I know we talked about this once before but just highlight again why it's important to focus on the Delta it's important to focus on the Delta because we are part of the Delta and the problems that we have they seem to continue to grow and so uh, that is why we named the camp uh, the conference the health disparity conference uh, we have tons and tons of preventable diseases that are that people are suffering from in the Delta. And so the conference is a way of raising the awareness okay. of the many preventable diseases that 
people are suffering from in the community, in particular African Americans. And so we're going to encourage you once again to come out to the Health Disparity Conference. This is our fifth conference. Our keynote speaker is Dr. Fully Love. He comes to us from uh, Columbus University Medical School in New, New York. His background is in HIV and A. Conference registration is only $70 uh, for all professionals. Uh, for field supervisors, it is $40. For okay. faculty, it is $40. And for students, it is $15. Okay. And the things that people can expect, um, it's so worth the cost. Um, like you said, there will be health screenings. There will be various uh, topics discussed. You all basically have taken over the student union. We'll be taking over the student union. So there will be something almost in every corner. <laughs> for Absolutely. Some, for and all, to do. all of the health screenings are free. Okay. And this is your opportunity to come out. And again, um, as Dr. Wall stated, they're private. And so again, this is just a screening. However, once you get your results, then you may need to follow up with your healthcare provider to get further testing, don't take your health for granted. Uh, many of us do, and I want to ask, when you are talking with your social work students, both you, Dr. Taylor and Dr. Wallace, do you try to encourage them to reach back out to the Delta, maybe consider working in those areas once they get their degrees and license? We do. Uh, many of our students go to work for agencies that they do their field placement in. Okay. And so our program has grown significantly over the last several years. So students are pretty spread out. Okay. You know, they we tell them coming into the program, when you do your field placement, you can expect to be placed as far as 50 to 60 miles outside of Jonesboro. Okay. And so some of them go back into the areas that they come from and some of them go to other places. Okay. Have you had students come back and tell you how these programs have enriched them in their, just in their personal lives? Um, how their internship and then now work as they're working in their field have they shared with you how it has been an enrichment? Yeah, we have many students that do call or do come back and talk about how their experience in our program did indeed change their life. And that's always good to hear that. All right. And also, and last but not least, um, Mr. Blaze Taylor, he has in partnership with his sister, <laughs> uh, created a nonprofit organization, The Power or Power of One or Two. And you can find us more information about this organization, www the power the power of one or two dot org. You can also um, has your Facebook page been set up yet? Yes, you can find us on Facebook. Um, there's links to our Facebook page on our website and you can also find us on the Facebook just searching on Facebook the power of one or two. And you can find us on Twitter, too, at The Power of One or Two. All right, so go look up his page, show him some love, maybe sign up to be a mentor. Um, you never know what difference you can make as an individual. So we thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today on this Friday. I hope everyone is making plans to make today great. The weather is kind of warming back up a little bit, so we pray for great weather for all of the events that are going on this weekend. There's a help pop up, don't for a pop up, help event tonight. Um, and the green space is next to the old Wolverine factory, so go check it out. It starts tonight about five o'clock. There will be a sunset yoga class, so you don't want to miss that. Um, thank you everybody for joining us. Thank you everyone out there for listening and tuning in. This has been Friday's edition of Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. Have a very blessed day.